In Kingdom Hearts, Sora traverses different worlds and adapts to the environment in order to protect the world order. So, could Sora be able to conquer the Paldea region if this was a world he had to go to on his journey to become a Keyblade Master? This idea was shared with me by Jonah Butterfield. If you guys have any challenge run suggestions for Scarlet and Violet, be sure to type it in the comments. And while you're down there, uh, why not subscribe? Rules for the challenge run are in the description. So we start off our adventure by choosing everybody's favorite duck who never heals you, Donald. Unlike Donald in the actual Kingdom Hearts games, Quaxly, Quaxwell, and Quaquaval are all relatively balanced Pokemon with more emphasis on physical attack versus special. Donald can be given certain stabs that boost his physical attack though, so I'm gonna run with this. Upon beginning our three campaigns, we unlock access to the Pokemon League and meet the king. Don't know why he's got two of him, so I guess Queen Minnie is here too. On our way to Cortanzo, we catch Goofy the Mastiff. I know this might seem like the weirdest choice, but I'll explain this later once it evolves. We also capture Dumbo the Fampy, who is gonna be our first summon. Jiminy the Krikaton, who later evolves into Krikatoon, and Antiform the Charcadet. Mickey is incredibly fast, but doesn't really hit too hard here. He does get a fairly decent level up learn set, such as Bullet Seed, Play Rough, and its signature move, Population Bomb, so the Wide Lens might be our best bet for his majesty. Goofy's actually a pretty solid Pokemon stat-wise. Its main struggle is not having the best variety of moves at the moment, but once it evolves, it'll be able to hold its ground much more effectively. Dumbo is pretty defensive, and can come in handy in a bunch of different difficult fights, Fights, such as against Iono and Mela. Unfortunately, it's a little too high level for us to use currently, but it does evolve soon. I'm not too excited to use Jiminy, but it's very close to evolving and has a passable attack stat upon evolution. If you're familiar with Fire Emblem, this is definitely going to be the Jagan of the run. Very strong early game, but inevitably it's gonna fall off hard as the challenge progresses. Finally, Charcadet is incredibly weak with a plethora of not so great moves, but unfortunately we have to wait a little bit for it to evolve since we're going to need some resources in order to do so. But once it does, it's going to be a very hard hitter and I'm very excited to use it. So with a water type with flying moves, a fire type and a fully evolved bug type, how do you think things went against Katie? Do you think A, you won with finesse and ease, or B, it was a little tricky, but I think you still came out on top. Well, guess what? Both are wrong because this battle was an absolute bloodbath. I started off with Donald and set up a single workup to take down Nimble and Tarantula pretty easily. We were at roughly half health when our Teddy Ursa came out and then everything came crashing down from there. I hit Teddy Ursa with an Aqua Jet because I didn't think we'd outspeed due to our sassy nature and we did about 30% as we got taken down. Mickey got a Super Fang off, but it got taken down with a Fury Cutter, Jiminy got eviscerated by a Fury Cutter, and Goofy obviously got obliterated with a Fury Cutter. Our last hope here is to rely on the Anti-Form. Even though Teddy Ursa was at a very low amount of health, it of course had to start raining mid-battle, weakening our incoming embers. But thankfully, I was able to terastalize, survive a Fury Cutter with 2 HP, winning us our first of 18 badges. Good God. That was a roller coaster. Before taking on Brassius, we did a little bit of grinding. During that process, Donald evolved into Quaxwell. We also caught Simba the Litleo, and unfortunately, it's just one level over Brassius' level cap, so we can't use it just yet. But when it evolves, Pyroar is actually pretty speedy and powerful. I can't complain. Brassius, though, was quick and painless. With the help of Terrestrialization, Petalil and Smoliv were an easy one-hit KO, and Sudowoodo could have been a one-hit KO, but it lived on one HP with Sturdy, but he went down the following turn. My next goal was to take on the Titan Cloth, and if you know me, you know that I despise Cloth and need to put every single one out of its misery. Thanks to Donald just learning Water Pulse, both Cloth phases went down easily and Arvin got his first bit of Herba Mystica. After receiving our third badge, we went to catch not one, but two Steel Fairy types. I ran all the way over to the ruins by the Titan Cloth in order to find Ralph the Tinkating, and then went all the way over to Alfernada in order to obtain the most crucial part of this run, the Keyblade. Ralph is pitifully weak. Even when it evolves, its attack stat is not gonna be anything great, but it makes up for it with the move Gigaton Hammer. Plus, Tinkaton is like one of my favorite Pokemon from this game, so I'm looking for any excuse to be able to to use it again. The Keyblade's gonna be a bit of a weird Pokemon to use because it's sort of an exception to this level cap rule. We managed to catch it in one Pokeball, but since we're required to keep it in the party, it's not gonna obey us for a very long time. I could breed one, but since Sora took a long time to really learn how to use the Keyblade, I figured, you know, having it disobey us was kind of fitting and funny. Anyway, it's a great utility Pokemon with tons of buffing moves for us to use throughout the run, and it also really held its own in our small Pokemon run from a few weeks back. Bombardier's next, and Ralph actually did some pretty good damage
damage, but ultimately got taken out. Donald came out and took out the rest of the first form and all of the second form thanks to Terrastalizing. From one dark type to the next, we decided to tackle the dark base and fight Giacomo. He starts off with a Pawniard, so after just learning Rock Smash on Ralph, I felt pretty confident leading off with it. Well, shame on me for being confident, I guess, because Rock Smash did practically no damage and Pawniard's Metal Claw did way too much. I decided to save Ralph so we could use Baby Tall Eyes on the Starmobile. Goofy took the fall so that I could swap in with Donald safely and take it out with a low sweep. As the Starmobile came out, we stay in with Donald to take the Intimidate, but it hit us with a Wicked Torque, which put us to sleep, which caused us to faint in the next turn. I sent out Jiminy next, and it felt like no matter how many pounces I went for, I just could not outspeed this thing. Regardless, the Starmobile was taken down thanks to Jiminy. I honestly did not expect to Jiminy to be doing as much as it is in this run, so th this is getting a little weird. <laughs> Upon arriving in Lavincia, we had our first battle against Nimona since we battled outside Mesa Goza, and let's just say you had to be there. Oh! Oh, what is... <laughs> oh, no! Next up in our gym challenge is my favorite gym leader in these games, Iono. But before we challenged her, I decided to pick up the soft sand for Dumbo and the metronome for Jiminy. Since she's an electric type gym leader, you'd think that Dumbo is the best addition to bring, but two of her four Pokemon were immune to ground moves and her belly bolt knows water gun, so this is gonna be a bit of an uphill battle for us. She starts off with Watchroll and I started off with Dumbo, taking it down with a few rollouts. As Belly Bolt comes out, I switched into Jiminy to hit it with a few Fury Cutters, which is why I bought the Metronome. And too bad I couldn't even take out Belly Bolt. It survived with just a sliver of HP and then absolutely demolished Jiminy thanks to a boosted spark from Electromorphosis. I sent out Donald to take it out with an Aqua Jet, but of course it didn't go down then. So Dumbo had to take it out, but it went down almost immediately when Luxio came out. By this point, everything on my team was taken out and all I had left were the Keyblade and the Antiform. I sent out the Kingdom Key and we took out Luxio Luxio with a play rough, but once Miss Magius came out, things got wild. We started off by missing a play rough because Karma hates me, followed by us getting confused because Karma hates me. This was followed by the Kingdom Key not obeying me twice in a row because Karma hates me, and being brought below half health in the process because Karma hates me. We were finally able to land a play rough taking out Miss Magius, getting us our sixth badge. Afterward, we had a few encounters to obtain. Firstly was Bambi the Deerling, which by the way, I could have obtained all the way at the beginning of the game, I'm just an idiot, and Atropius, who was actually conveniently growing some Palpu fruit, and Dumbo evolved in the process. Bambi has some pretty good speed, but it's plagued by having a better special attack moveset than physical, but that doesn't mean it has nothing. Once it evolves, it'll get access to some great moves. Atropius is one of my favorite Pokemon from Generation 3, so I'm really excited to be able to use this thing, but it is plagued by its awful typing. It's got decent decent bulk, but grass flying is not the best for taking hits, especially since grass is one of the worst offensive typings in the game. Dumbo now is incredible on the physical side, but still pretty lackluster on the special side. But thanks to Sturdy, it'll at least be able to always live one hit, and it's actually got some pretty good type variety now that it's evolved. All right, so say what you will about Team Star, but I am genuinely concerned about fighting Mela here. Granted, she doesn't have that big of a team, but her Starmobile hits hard and has speed boost as an ability, all while her Torkoal automatically sets up the sun to boost the power of her own fire type moves. So in order to give me as small of a hassle as possible, I evolved our Antiform into Seraledge and then caught Ariel the Eevee, who I evolved into Vaporeon. The Antiform has some great stats and design too, but unfortunately its best moves don't come until it's much higher level. It also comes with the Flash Fire ability, which gives us a nice immunity to Mela's fire moves. Vaporeon is also a bulky water type with lots of HP and lots of special defense, which is just the way that I like them. And Vaporeon Orion is my favorite evolution. Y'all should tell me what yours are in the comments. My plan was basically to set up the rain as Torkoal comes out and then just tank all of Mela's moves, but with a stroke of luck, I didn't even have to do that because it just started naturally raining at Mela's base, which completely canceled out the drought. Torkoal went down to a single water pulse and the Starmobile was an easy three hit KO, only doing 21 damage the entire battle. The Titan Orthworm was an agonizing experience. I decided to bring Dumbo to Terrastalize and then hit it with a few bulldozes, only to remember Remember that this thing has Earth Eater. So the best thing that I could do was just embrace my inner transformer and then roll out. The only problem here is that all the other Pokemon that I had were primarily physical attackers, so this was very time consuming. However, it was a little faster in the second phase, thanks to Arvin and his Toad School. For Kofu, I decided to bring along the Palpu Fruit and Bambi, mainly because I love Tropius, but also because Bambi comes with the move Bullet Seed. It's typically not the best move, but thanks to the new loaded dice item, this move always hits a guaranteed four times times, meaning Deerling has a 100 base power physical grass type move at its disposal, not even considering the stab boost. Kofu leads off 
with his vault and Valooza, and I lead off with Bambi. We did some good damage with Bullet Seed, but we went down to a few plucks and slashes. Goofy was able to come out and take it out with a payback. Wolk Trio came out next, and it goes down to the Palpu Fruits, Razor Leafs, and Stomps. I decided to switch out since we got our speed dropped from Gooey, but Outlast is Crabominable, and it ultimately went down to a Leaf Storm and Razor Leaf from the Palpu Fruit. Man! I love this thing. We need a new evolution for it sometime soon. I was pretty hesitant about the Atticus battle coming up. His team is actually pretty solid for this point in the game, and the fact that his Starmobile has Toxic Debris means that he's easily able to whittle me down with Toxic Poisoning. I let off with Jiminy, but at this point, it's starting to fall off very hard. It dealt a good amount of damage to Skun Tank, but Donald ultimately had to take it out with an Aqua Cutter. I sent in Goofy to take out Muck, and this is where things got a little weird. Upon evolution, Mabostiff learns the move Comeuppance, which I assumed was one of those negative priority retaliation moves like counter and mirror coat, but it seems like that's not the case. So we wasted our first turn to take a ton of damage from Sludge Wave, but we actually clutched up and got two flinches in a row from Bite, which allowed us to take out Muck. Out next is Atticus's plain Rev of Room, so I terrestrialized Dumbo to take it out with a Bulldoze, though we took a lot of damage from Iron Head. The Starmobile actually didn't do a lot of damage to us though, but I find it absolutely hilarious that we couldn't outspeed the Starmobile until it was literally at minus six speed. Regardless, we got some great damage off thanks to Dumbo, but Goofy and Donald were able to finish it off. Man, it feels like Dumbo is the only summon that I've been using so far. It's just that good. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that Goofy and Ralph evolved. Unfortunately, there really isn't much to say about Ralph, since it still doesn't hit very hard, and it cannot take physical hits very well, which seems really oxymoronic <laughs> due to being a steel type, but at least it's a little bit faster and can take special hits a little bit better. Goofy is leagues better though. It can easily hit just as hard as Dumbo, but is a little faster and a little bulkier on the special side. Plus, thanks to its new guard dog ability, it can never be forced out of battle and will have its attack boosted if intimidated. Prior to fighting Larry, I evolved Dumbo. Donald. Not only does this skyrocket our attack stat, but it also allows us to get stabbed from our fighting moves like low sweep, so I was feeling a little more confident going against Larry, but this battle was still very intense. He starts off with Komala, and I decided to lead off with Jiminy, who I just taught Brick Break to. I figured a few Brick Breaks would do some decent damage, especially with the Metronome, but not only did I not expect Komala to outspeed, I also did not expect it to absolutely obliterate us with a critical hit slam. This thing did massive damage to a bunch of my team, but I was able to send in Donald to take it out. The Dunsparce took out Donald, but not after we brought it dangerously low, thanks to a low sweep. I decided to send in Dumbo, but it was doing some pitiful damage even when his terrestrialized Staraptor came out. Needless to say, this thing did some crazy damage with two times boosted facades, but I ultimately had to resort to bringing in the Kingdom Key to save the day. And while we did come out winning, the Keyblade was still incredibly disobedient. It's a good thing we can only use this thing for one whole level before it evolves. Thankfully, we don't really need to worry about that, because the next upcoming battle is Rhyme. We have a dark type Pokemon, and we constantly get stat boosts every single time we take one of her Pokemon out, and we get an Omni boost when we Terrastalize. So even though we were in a double battle, Mimikyu, Banat, Houndstone, and her Terra Ghost Toxtricity went down to Goofy. The Titan Iron Treads was pretty easy, nothing really to say here. Both phases were easily taken down thanks to Donald's Aqua Step, and now that we have the Glide ability, that's gonna make traversing the Paldea region that much easier. Tulip was actually a little tougher than expected. She leads off with Farigarath and immediately sets up a Reflect, but went down pretty quickly thanks to Jiminy and Donald. Gardevoir is out next, and for Gardevoir, I decided to teach Dumbo Gunk Shot, in hopes that we could take it out in one shot. We survived an Energy Ball thanks to Sturdy, but just missed the KO on Gardevoir. We did, however, get a Lucky Poison, and we were thankfully able to whittle it down with that. Espathro went down to a single crunch from Goofy, but unfortunately, Florgis was a little too fast and took Goofy out with a Moonblast. Florgis proceeded to take out every other member of my team, so Klefki came in to save the battle again. Grusha was actually very easy, and for once we actually got to use Pyroar. We immediately started off with a Sunny Day to boost our Fire-type moves and weaken his Water-type moves. Due to the Sun, Frostmoth missed Blizzard and then went down to a Flamethrower. Beartick went down to two Low Sweeps, Satitan went down to two Flamethrowers, Altaria missed a Hurricane due to Sun, going down to two Flamethrowers. Prior to fighting Ortega, we evolved Ralph into Tinkaton. It's still a little disappointing to see this thing be as physically weak as it is, but it comes with the great move Gigaton Hammer. It is literally perfect timing for this battle. Ironically, we use the Kingdom Key most of the time. We decided to stall out his Azumarill with Reflect and Protect until we could set ourselves up to do loads of damage with Flash Cannon. With this, Azumarill, Wigglytuff, and Doxbun went down quickly, while Tinkaton took care of the Starmobile with a few Gigaton Hammers. The Titan Dundozo and Tatsugiri were actually pretty easy thanks to finding another Palpu Fruit, that new Leaf Storm and Outrage, to handle both Pokemon super effectively. But that's all the Titans completely 
completed, but I do want to save Arvin's final battle for later, and we're way too underleveled to try and fight him anyway. Before fighting Aerie, we actually got a massive upgrade to our team, ironically to Jiminy. At level 48, Jiminy learns Sticky Web, which is an incredible hazard that causes all Pokemon that aren't a flying type or a levitator to drop their speed one stage, making some of the scarier, faster Pokemon slower than us. This is a great move to have, especially since there are a lot of fast and deadly Pokemon that we're going to need to fight up on the horizon. I made so many wrong plays during our fight with Aerie, though, that I'm actually amazed we even came out of that fight alive. She leads off with a Toxic Croak, and I lead off with Jiminy. After surviving a Poison Jab, we set up a Sticky Web. After Jiminy went down, Donald came out and took it out with two Acrobatics, but we got dangerously low on health. Passimian got taken out thanks to Ralph, as she sends out Annihilate. Unfortunately, we missed a play route, so we got taken down by Rage Fist. I sent in the Kingdom Key accidentally, but I set up a Reflect in the process in order to protect us from some of her harder-hitting moves. But even at minus two special defense, Flash Cannon does very little. But thanks to a lucky special defense drop, we brought it pretty low before getting taken out. Donald came back out and finished it off as she goes into Lucario, and for some reason, I decided to go and hit it with an Acrobatics instead of a close combat like an idiot. The Palpu Fruit took it out with an Air Slash, and surprisingly, the Palpu Fruit took care of the Starmobile. Yeah, I actually did not have that hard of a time with Aerie because we had Tropius. Since we had Air Slash, it ignores her stamina boosts. Four Air Slashes and she was done. And you all say Tropius is a bad Pokemon. For shame, all of you. Clavel was actually pretty tough, solely because of Meowskareta. On our successful attempt, we set up a sticky web against Oranguru with Jiminy, and then switch into Goofy upon getting taken out. A terrestrialized Crunch takes it out in one hit, and a Bombasto comes out next. Our best bet here was to just set up with the Kingdom Key, but we need to stall as much as we can because it has Aurora Veil. We take lots of damage from Woodhammer and Blizzard, but we ultimately were able to take it down with a Flash Cannon. Houndoom is out next, and we thankfully dodged a Fire Blast, and two Flash Cannons brought it to about 33% so Donald was able to take it out. Gyarados is out next, and I send in Goofy to get the Guard Dog boost. We take tons of damage from Aqua Tail, but we retaliated with a four times effective Thunder Fang. Poltegeist went down to a single crunch, and I decided to use Dumbo for Meowskareta. We are guaranteed to survive a hit from Sturdy, so I decided to test my luck with Gung Shot, and just like Gardevoir, it didn't quite kill, but it did leave a poison, meaning we practically won since he was on a timer. The Palpu Fruit took it out shortly after Dumbo went down. We were pretty decently underleveled for this point, so if we struggled with Clavel, I don't even want to think about the Penny fight. Hey, guess what was awful and super tedious? Yeah, Penny's constant baby dollizing made this battle a little unbearable for me. This is hands down my least favorite fight in the game. There were some attempts where we couldn't even get to Sylveon. It was just that bad. On our successful attempt, we started off with Jiminy in order to set up a sticky web as she leads with Umbreon. Jiminy was actually able to take it down with a few boosted Fury Cutters, while Donald takes out Flareon with an Aqua Step. Jolteon is a huge threat because I ultimately decided to bring Pyroar for this fight for sun purposes. But even though Thunder has 50% accuracy in the sun, every single time I fought her, she never missed. Simba unfortunately got paralyzed, so Klefki had to come take it out, but it still took way too much damage from another Thunder. Goofy took out Vaporeon with a few Thunder Fangs, and the Palpu Fruit came in and was able to deal with Leafeon. Outlast is her Sylveon. Donald does some great damage with a critical hit Aqua Step as Penny retaliates with a Moonblast, but due to the Sticky Web, we always outspeed, and that finally allowed us to take out Sylveon, giving us the win. Let's go take care of the rest of Nimona's story. So Rika of the Elite Four was actually pretty easy since we have a ton of different Pokemon that have some kind of advantage against her, but I'd love for her to take advantage of me. She leads off with her Whiskash, and I lead off with the Palpu Fruit. I totally forgot that this thing had Blizzard, so boy am I glad I terrestrialized into a Grass type beforehand. Magical Leaf easily took it out in one hit. Camerupt was an easy Oko with Aqua Step from Donald, and her Donphan went down to two more after dealing tons of damage to us with Earthquake. Due to being at plus three speed with Aqua Step, Dugtrito was easily out sped and taken out, as Donald does some decent damage to Clodsire before going down. Tropius came in and was able to finish it off. Poppy was a little terrifying since I don't really have that much for steel types. She leads off with Kaparaja, and I let off with Jiminy in order to set up the sticky web. After he goes down, Goofy comes in and takes it out with a few crunches. Corviknight's out next, and we managed to actually outspeed it with a Thunderfang before missing another one and getting taken down. Simba came in and took it out with a flamethrower. I decided to stay in as Bronzong comes in, and we were able to take it out with two flamethrowers. And then here's where I made a bad play. See, Kaparaja set up the Stealth Rocks while Goofy was working on taking it down, and as Magnezone came out, I ultimately switched Simba out, which was a terrible play on my part, because now Simba just automatically faints when I switch it back in. But that doesn't mean I didn't have another plan. I decided to actually let Magnezone take out the rest of my team so that I had to rely on the Anti-Form and set up a Swords Dance. Thanks to Bitterblade, we can heal off any damage we've received from Discharge and Stealth Rocks and take down Magnezone. Outlast is her terrestrialized Tinkaton, but it 
easily went down to another bitter blade. Larry was pretty simple too, because all I did was just set up with the Keyblade. He leads off with Tropius, and all I did was just set up a bunch of Calm Minds. With this, we were able to sweep through a majority of his team, but we still needed to be a little more strategic. As Altaria and Tropius went down, he goes into his old ace, Staraptor, and this thing has close combat, which would normally hit me neutrally. But after protecting to get a little more leftovers recovery, I decided to terastalize into a fairy type in order to hereby resist close combat, and then take it down with a dazzling gleam. After Oricorio went down, Flamigo was unfortunately able to outspeed us and then take us down, but it took so much damage from its own Brave Birds that I just threw team members onto the field so that Flamigo would just take itself out. I was very scared about Hassel, because he has an absolutely stacked team with incredibly hard hitters. I really wanted to try and find a good place to set up Sticky Web, but the best option was ironically at the very beginning when he leads off with Noivern. It has a 5% chance to miss Air Slash, so I decided to bank on that no matter how how many attempts it took. Well, I actually didn't even need to worry about that, because Hassel didn't even use Air Slash first turn, it used Super Fang. That worked out in my favor. We sent in the Kingdom Key afterward and set up a few Calm Minds, but unfortunately, due to Super Fang, we got brought very low. We took out Noivern with a Dazzling Gleam as Dragalgic comes out, but of course, it takes us out with a critical hit Hydro Pump. I sent in Goofy to take it down with a few crunches. Ralph came out and dealt with Flapple after getting Leech Seated, and Goofy was able to outspeed Haxorus and hit it with a crunch before getting taken down. Donald was able to come in and take it out with a close combat. Outlast is his ace, Bax Caliber, and I hit it with a close combat, forgetting that he would terastalize into a pure your dragon, so he kills us with Glaive Rush. But the thing about Glaive Rush is that when you use it, the next move that hits you deals double damage. So not wanting to risk a 10% chance to miss Play Rough, I have Ralph take it out with a Gigaton Hammer. I think we can all agree that Gita is probably the easiest champion in the franchise alongside Diantha. And boy am I glad I did not set up with the Kingdom Key here, because Opportunist as Pathra would have easily run through my team. Jiminy did its job and set up Sticky Web, but I went into Goofy to take it out with a few crunches. As Pathra set up a Reflect though, so so that could be troublesome. She goes into Go Goat next, so I send in Simba to set up the sun and then take it out, followed by taking out Avalug and dealing a massive chunk of damage to King Gambit. As Simba goes down, Donald takes it out as it just barely misses the KO on Glamora. Goofy was able to come back out and then take it down, meaning that we are the new Keyblade Masters of the Paldea region. I mean, champion. We're, we're champions. And then we lost to Nimona three times. This was painful, especially since he had to keep on sitting through the cutscenes over and over and over again. We were actually pretty underleveled compared to her current team, and we didn't have many answers to some of her stronger Pokemon like Orthworm. Also, her Skeledurge would constantly survive our attacks. Like, there was one time we were fighting her, and we literally could have won, but her Skeledurge lived on what had to be one HP from a Shadow Claw from the Anti-Form. So after some grinding and moveset changes, Lycanroc went down to Donald, Palmot went down to Dumbo, Gudra went down to the Kingdom Key, Orthworm went down to Donald, the Dunsparce went down thanks to Parish Song on Jiminy, and Skeledurge fell to the Anti-Form, which, by the way, is the better Fire Ghost type. Seeing as it took me a very long time to beat Nimona, my chat was not very confident that I'd be able to beat Arvin my first try. He's got a pretty decent team, but some common weaknesses among them to take advantage of. He leads off with Greedon, and I set up a Sticky Web, as well as a Perish Song, in order to take it out easily. The Palpu Fruit did a ton of damage to Scovillain, but not enough to take it out, so Donald was able to finish it off with an Acrobatics. Goofy managed to take out Toad Scroll with an Ice Fang, as the Kingdom Key took out Garganical with a few Flash Cannons. He could have taken me out with an Earthquake pretty easily, but apparently, according to Arvin, uh, late game rocks were just so much more important. Plus, Mr. went down to two Dazzling Gleams, and the Kingdom Key did tons of damage to his own Mabostiff, but Donald ultimately finished the battle. That was pretty easy, but we have a very stressful fight ahead of us. I don't think I need to emphasize my worry about fighting Toro. Even without the Quark Drive boost, his Pokemon pack absolute punches with some incredible types as well. Not to mention, Iron Valiant has a booster pack, which does give him the Quark Drive boost. He starts off with Iron Moth, which is a poison and fire type, and I decided to start off with Jiminy here, who I'd given the Focus Sash to so that we can always safely set up a Sticky Web. You know, it's our typical strategy at this point. He hits us with a Fiery Dance, which is only slightly terrifying. It's even more terrifying, seeing as he got a special attack boost from it. Expecting us to just go down, I jokingly went for Parish Song, just for Jiminy to survive and tough it out while already on 1 HP. This puts us in a very good spot, seeing as Toro doesn't actually switch out his Iron Moth. So while we did get Jiminy and the Kingdom Key taken out early, it was on a timer and went down very quickly. Out next is Iron Bundle, and I was able to take it out in one close combat, but even at minus one speed, Iron Bundle was still able to outspeed and almost took us out with a freeze dry. So I'm gonna need to be very careful with his next few Pokemon. Out next is Iron Hands, and it was easily taken out by Dumbo, though we did take a bit of damage from Fake Out and Drain Punch. Iron Thorns is out 
next, but that was outsped and easily taken down by a single earthquake. Kind of weird that he didn't send out Iron Jugulus beforehand. Hey, speaking of Jugulus, this was wild. I sent in Goofy, forgetting that this thing is a dark flying type, not a dark dragon type anymore, which is why I have Outrage in the moveset. But not only did we happen to get flinched twice in a row by Air Slash, we also managed to actually tough out two hits in a row. So we managed to hit a Thunder Fang, but it did a little over half. Dumbo was able to come in and take it out. Outlast is the Iron Valiant, and this thing could have been a menace if I didn't have that sticky web up, and if I didn't manage to tough out another hit, baby. I don't even know what my luck is with this battle. Yet Dumbo managed to live one hit and then get an earthquake off as Donald just barely misses the KO again with acrobatics. And that's my fault because I have the mystic water on it, but the anti-form was able to come out and finish it off with a bitter blade, winning us the run. I cannot believe we won that on the first try.